Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be recapping what we learned in the last few videos. It's going to be quite long. Uh, we've learned much about Newton's method, many methods of approximation, and of course touched on a bit of uh, integrals and derivatives. So today we're just going to recap some Newton's method and we're just going to touch on some uh, anti-derivative, the derivative advanced guessing method. Uh, I have individual videos for each of these topics if you want to check them out if you don't understand them full. So yeah, let's get started. So Newton's method, let's start off with that. We have this kind of long question I'm just making. I did this on the spot just now. So I just made this up. This uh, equation up was kind of difficult, but I guess it's dual for the purposes of this video. I may have made some numerical um, mistakes. I don't know. I checked, but I don't think I did. Um, if you do know, then please tell me in the comments. But yeah, so here's this function. And we're going to try to set this to zero. So, uh, what's the value of x? What is the value of x that makes this function zero? Okay, so that's what Newton approximation is. We can set this to a different point and use it, but we have to adjust the equation. So, uh, let's take a, a guess. So, we first need to find a starting point to where we can use the Newton method of approximation. Of course, here's the equation for Newton method. Newton's method equation is x n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus f of x of n over f prime x of n. x base n. No, what do you call it? You can call it whatever you want. But something like that. So we first have to find out our x of n, our starting point. We need to first find out x1. So what's that equal to? Okay, we don't know right now. We're going to try to find it. So let's try. So we need a starting point. So I'm going to plug in a value. So let's plug in a value of zero. That's always a good starting point and see what we get. I did this beforehand and we get six. Of course, we have zero. These canceled out and that's just six left. That's common sense. So, um, let's start out in a direction. Okay, let's start out in a direction. So, let's go, hmm, how about let's go f negative one. Okay, let's go in that direction. See if it decreases. If it goes past zero, okay, if it goes past zero, then uh, it means that it is a zero goes through the point because this is a continuous function. This must be a continuous function for this to work. Okay, so negative one, plug it in. Negative one, this is just going to be negative one. It's a negative four minus eight, that's negative 12. Negative 12 plus six, that's negative six. Okay, so going through this and this, we have zero that's in between. So I'll make a guess that's halfway because this is six and negative six. I'll make a guess that it is. Uh, this x01 that I'm going to use is going to be 0 0.5. Okay, that's the approximation. It's going between these two. Uh, negative 0 0.5, sorry. Negative 0 0.5. Okay, so let's use Newton's method. Let's use this, this thing. So I'll copy this here and we'll start. So xn plus 1, in this case, is just going to be x of 2. That's going to be equal to uh, negative 0 0.5 minus f negative 0 0.5 over f prime of negative 0 0.5. Okay, that's going to be equal to negative 0 0.5 minus, so, um, first we need to find f prime, uh, power rule, let's do that. The power rule gives us 12x squared minus 16x. Okay, power rule gives us that. So that's equal to f prime of x. It's f prime of x. So, let's go back here f of negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5 times negative, that's going to be negative 0 0.125 times 4. That's going to be our first term, minus our second term, 8 times 0 0.25, negative 0 0.5 uh, five squared is 0 0.25, and this is going to be all plus 6. Okay, we're going to divide all of this by our f prime. Let's plug in a negative 0 0.5 to this. This is going to be 12 times 0 0.25, okay, minus 16 times negative 0 0.25. Okay, I did this by friend. Maybe I've made a numerical mistake, but I don't think I have. If you, if you do this and you see that I made it, please tell me in the comments uh, so I can fix it. So negative 0 0.5, but for all purposes of this, you're trying to understand this. It's going to be negative 0 0.5 minus 3.5 over 11 is what I got. And that's roughly equal to... Uh, well, that's just equal to, that's just equal to negative 0 0.81 repeating. Okay, so x of 2 is equal to that. So, 
let's see how far we are off. So if we plug in this here, this into this equation, we plug in this into this equation, we get something, uh, I kind of forgot it, but we plug it in, I think we get something, uh, do this in blue, so it's in the, oh, sorry, do this in blue, so it's in the uh, f of x color. Okay. This here, cyan, aqua, whatever you call it. Uh, we get something like one negative 1.5. Right, that's very off. I'm very much off. We're trying to get a zero. That's the desired value. So we're going to have to use x3. So x3, that's equal to x2, which is going to be negative 0 0.81. I'll actually do this in a different color. So we kind of get the thing. So x3, that's going to be x3. That's going to be equal to, I do this in magenta. It's going to be negative 0 0.81 repeating minus our 4 negative 0 0.81 repeating cubed okay minus 8 negative 0 0.81 repeating squared plus 6 oops kind of running out of space there that over our 12 times negative 0 0.81 repeating minus 16 negative 0 0.81 repeating now you may be asking before we finish now why would we go all through all this trouble um, all these decimals going trying to find this can we just factor and solve well of course you could do that or you can use um, quadratic equation but this might not work for this uh, but of course you could do that but that just um, for very long functions that just takes too much time this is much time saving it for very long functions of course for this function you could do that because this is just an algebraic function that's very easy to solve you could just factor it two out and you can get factoring but of course we're going to do this method for the purposes of this video but you want to draw the boundary of where you want to do Newton's method and where you just want to solve the equation okay so let's solve this I did this beforehand and get something roughly negative 0 0.7449 so something like that okay something like this of this line so I'll just I just rerounded this to negative 0 0.745 this purpose and we're going to plug this back in okay we plug this back in do this again in cyan plug this back in and i got something like um uh, i got something very very close i got something negative 0 0.0942 and this is already one decimal in the zero this should be a very close approximation of what uh, this is of course i don't think this is close enough because this is still hundredth place is still the nine so i think we can do x of four but for this purpose of the video and for saving time i'm not going to do that just stick it here so we get something like that uh, f of negative 0 0.745 is a very close approximation just equal to roughly equal to zero so something like that. We just use Newton approximation. Just go it once. We oops. Go it. We do this once. We plug this back in, and then we do this another time, and we plug this back in. So loop. Okay. So I guess that was a good review of Newton's method. If you still don't understand the full and why we do it, check out the video. Okay. So here's another. Uh, we're just gonna do uh, advanced guessing. This is gonna be our last problem here. So I'm just going to try to find the integral of sine x cosine x. Okay, I did this uh, same problem in that video, last video. We're just going to do it again with advanced guessing. So, what advanced guessing is, it's not real integral. We're just going to antiderivative. We're just going to take a guess, close guess. Let's take sine x squared x. Let's take that guess. That's our guess. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of this thing. And that gives us 2 sine x cosine x, right? 2 sine x. This is, this is also rewritten as sine x, sine x. Right? Okay, so that's what this is. And the derivative of this is 2 sine x cosine x. That's what I believe that is what it is. Okay, and then we have this thing here, and we are going to see how off this is. So these two things are the same. We just have this 2 lying out. So how do we get rid of this 2? Well, if we times by 1 half, one half, these twos cancel out. So if we times that one half there, we want to times by one half here, and then we get one half sine squared x plus c. So we see how much we're off by, we times by the reciprocal, and we get that. 
And this is just a trick and plus a derivative of constant zero. So that's why I added that. And we can use this. So if you really want to check out how to do this and do this quicker, uh, I suggest you check out the video yeah, that we have before. So that was a review of our last few chapters, um, Newton's method. I didn't do linear approximation here or mean value thing. Go check out those videos. I just did these two topics, the main ones. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. I know this was a long one, but bye.